Pride excelled in every test she set him. He was a truly incredible individual. She knew that the only reason he had joined was to prove himself to be better than the other captains. His ego was possibly the only thing more impressive than his skill at arms. He was an ideal leader, and his men looked up to him with a mix of admiration and hope, each wanting to walk in the shadow of his accomplishments. Pride enjoyed this devotion for a while, but as always happened, he grew bored and restless. Even the greatest challenges she set were child's play to him. When Lust told him of the rebellion she was planning, he saw something that could test him. Their leader was a fearsome individual with a well-earned reputation that made most men fear her. Killing her would truly be a challenge. He began planning out just how he would go about doing it. Should he go in guns blazing and hope to overwhelm the woman, or try to catch her unaware and strike once her guard was down? There was much to consider, but he didn't have the chance to work out a foolproof plan. On the day Greed burst through the door, Pride was still trying to work out the strengths and weaknesses of his opponent. As the other captains hurried to gather their weapons, he knew he would have to act quickly, lest someone else get the kill before him. He of course was planning on eliminating the others afterwards, and taking control for himself, but he still wanted the glory of killing her. He gathered up his weapons and charged into action. He wove through the corridors, painting the walls with the blood of soldiers. Be it by sword or by gun, he killed each man before they even had the chance to react, cutting a bloody path straight to where he knew she would be. As the door to her quarters came into view, he readied himself, making sure both his pistols were reloaded and his blade was sharp. Normally he wouldn't even think to look at his weapons, but on this occasion he knew he had to be prepared. Taking a moment to control his breathing and slow his beating heart, he focused on the door at the end of the hallway. He had a pistol in each hand, sweat making his grip on them more loose than normal. He would charge into the room and empty both of his pistols into her, before dropping them to the ground, drawing his sword, and cutting down anyone left alive in the room. He ran down the hall at full speed. As he reached the door, he saw a figure out the corner of his eye, before everything went black. What Pride had failed to account for was that his target may be ready and waiting. She had been standing just off to the side of her door, awaiting the inevitable attempt on her life. When Pride charged forward, she was ready. Knowing that he was faster than even her, she struck out before he even came into view, perfectly anticipating the timing of events and causing her power fist to crush into the side of his head and knock him out instantly. Examining her strike let her see that Pride was still alive, but the blow had created a large dent in the side of his skull, and the pressure of a fluid in his head would cause him to die a slow and painful death, devoid of any dignity or glory. A wicked smile passed over her lips as she walked away from the dying man. As fate would have it, today would not be the day of Pride's death. Instead, he regains enough consciousness to see the army of traps in the tunnel, and stops Greed from suffering the same fate as him. He never expected Greed to save him, but that he did. Once the pair were far enough away from danger, Greed laid down the unconscious Pride and studied the dying man, working out if he could save him. He may not have been trained in medicine, but Greed was easily the smartest of the seven, and came to the same conclusion that their previous leader had. Thinking fast, he drew a laser pistol, and made a few quick changes to it in order to turn it into more of a drill than a weapon. He then began boring into the back of Pride's skull, working painfully slowly, in order to ensure he created a hole through the bone, but not cutting into the man's brain. His attempt was successful, and the liquid began to drain from Pride's skull. Greed knew this wouldn't be enough, but had to work with what he had, getting them both to safety before finishing his work at saving Pride's life. Pride awoke some time later, to the sight of total darkness. As he began to move himself and find a source of light, he felt a hand on his chest keeping him in place. To his right, he heard the voice of Greed, explaining what had happened in the compound. After he was done explaining, Pride questioned him as to why they were sitting in an unlit room. When he was told that the room was perfectly well lit, the realisation hit Pride with a pain greater than any he had felt before. He was blind. Over the following months, Greed helped train Pride to fight without the use of his sight, and to rely more on his other senses. Although he never regained his previous skill, he was still able to fight to a degree that outclassed most men, and it wasn't long before Greed had him helping out on contracts. In time, he begins to see the slight flickering of light every once in a while, and hopes that his eyesight is returning, but before he has the time to find out, the bombs will fall, and he has to escape to the safety of the vault. 
Pride has Strength 5, Perception 1, and Endurance of 4, Charisma of 3, Intelligence 5, Agility 10, and Luck 1. We can't afford to have Strength any lower for this build, as we will be using a melee weapon. 5 is a good balance, providing us with plenty of power without draining from the other stats. Perception is a dump stat sitting at 1. The loss of his sight has severely impacted Pride's accuracy, and he is no longer the deadly marksman he once was, instead having to fight up close to every enemy if he wants to ensure he hits them. Endurance is sat at 4. Although we can dodge most attacks fairly well, we still do need to be able to take a few hits without going down. Charisma has been put at free almost entirely for Lone Wanderer. Pride is incredibly arrogant, people may respect him, but they don't really like him that much. An intelligence of 5 shows that Pride has taken the time to develop his mind as well as his body, and will also help us level at an acceptable rate. Agility is the primary stat of this build. Having maxed agility means we have plenty of action points to play with, and helps us to move around faster. Last of all is Luck at 1. If anything, Luck is working against Pride, and he is forced to use his significant skills to counter this. The essential perks I've included for this build are Big Leagues, Gunslinger, Lone Wanderer, and Action Boy. Big Leagues and Gunslinger are the damage dealing perks of the build, allowing us to ultimately double the damage output of our weapons. Lone Wanderer is insanely powerful, so if we want to play as the best of a seven, we want this perk. It will let us carry more, deal more damage, and take more in return. What's not to like? Last and essential is Action Boy. This is going to let us regenerate action points at a staggering rate, letting us constantly go back into vats or sprint around enemies. Mobility is key to this build, so we don't want to ever end up stuck in one place. The recommended perks are Armorer, Chem Resistant, Gun Nut, Blitz, and Gun Fu. Without Armorer, we will have a ridiculously low armor rating, and can be killed a lot quicker, so it's a worthwhile perk to invest in. The reason it is an essential is that we don't need to worry so much about taking damage if we just move out of the way of the bullets being shot at us. Chem Resistant is a perk I added late to the build, but it is really worth having. Add Jet to the character, and suddenly we turn from a fairly strong build to an insane one who can walk around its foes and dominate them without breaking a sweat. Gun Nut is a really handy perk to have for giving us modding options, and it will help ensure our pistols are going to be the best they can be. The Blitz perk adds to the unnatural speed of the build, letting us literally teleport to our enemies and cut them down. This not only helps with mobility, but also shows just how insanely fast Pride is. The final recommended perk is Gun Fu. I had originally planned on basing the build around this, but I find that the perk is a little too situational to fit every circumstance. That being said, when we do start to get overwhelmed, we can just draw our pistol and cut down half a dozen enemies with ease thanks to this perk. The role-playing perks I went with are Science, Ninja, and Quick Hands. Science is a bit of an unusual one for a role-playing perk. Usually you either need it, or you don't. I originally added this as I was going to use plasma and laser pistols more with the build, but I preferred the feel of a slower-firing ballistic ones. If you wish to try out energy pistols, then it's worth grabbing the ranks of this perk, but if you decide to stick with the standard guns, then don't worry about it. Ninja has a place here due to the insane damage increase for melee weapons. Blitz and Ninja together let you take down most enemies from a short distance in a single swing of your blade. Pride isn't a stealth character however, so we won't be relying on Ninja for most engagements, and it's more just here for fun. I also like to think that Pride is one of the most powerful stealth characters out there, but he instead fights in the open for more of a challenge. The final perk of the build is Quick Hands. This goes even further to show how fast Pride is, and it also removes the cost of reloading in bats, something that we may end up doing a lot thanks to the low clip size on our main weapons. As an added note, this build doesn't have as high a perk investment as most of my others, so feel free to occasionally add to the special stats to improve the character. Try to prioritise strength, but endurance or luck are also decent choices. Factions are difficult for this character. He won't want to rely on them, but there will certainly be incentives on helping some of the factions out. I personally would recommend siding with the Nuka World Raiders, and more specifically, the Operators. Killing Coulter and becoming Overboss will play to his ego, and he will feel like he has something to prove to the Operators. As a group of snipers, he won't be satisfied until he can outshoot them. 
This may make it seem like he would just want them out of the way, but this would be like giving in to his affliction. Instead, he seeks to beat them at their own game. For a main story faction to end the game with, I would recommend either the Minutemen or Institute. The Minutemen will almost immediately grant you the rank of General, and this early boost to his ego will appeal to pride. However, it's not a huge challenge, and he will have to tolerate working with people so inferior to him that he barely sees them as people. The Institute, on the other hand, will grant more of a challenge for him, and he still has the chance to potentially end up in charge. He won't take kindly to being looked down on by the scientists of the Institute, though, and the desire to cut them down will always be present. In addition to these factions, I would recommend siding with the Railroad long enough to get Ballistic Weave. I wouldn't worry about sticking with them any longer than necessary, though. Pride will travel alone. He previously had almost always desired an audience when fighting, but now he prefers to travel on his own so that nobody can learn what happened to him. You could travel around with Dogmeat if you so wish, but I felt that Pride will want to prove to himself that he can survive the wastes entirely on his own. The weapons for this build will consist of a Chinese officer sword and the best pistols you can get your hands on. I personally use the Sword of Wonders as my main sword, as it comes fully upgraded and has an incredibly versatile legendary effect, making it great for all enemies. However, feel free to have a few different versions or choose your own favourite. In terms of pistols, I personally recommend going for slow firing guns that have a limited number of shots but a huge damage rating. Despite not being able to see where he is shooting, Pride will want to be as accurate a shot as possible, and even seeks to be punished for every missed shot. His training with Greed has helped him regain his accuracy to an extent, but he won't be happy until he is once again a master marksman. The pistols I found myself using whilst playing were the Gainer and a 50 cal pipe bolt action pistol. Arguably, Kellogg's pistol could be a better alternative than the Gainer, but I'll leave that choice to you. The pipe bolt action pistol works surprisingly well, and plays into Pride's ego. He can even kill with the most basic guns he finds laying around the wastes. The armour you will want to wear will be greaser jacket and jeans, destroyer's legs and sunglasses. The jacket and jeans look awesome, and really work well for adding to the character of Pride. Even in his current state, he will want to look good while fighting. This item does take Ballistic Weave, so it may well end up as our main source of resistances as well. The destroyer legs can be bought in Vault 81 and Good Neighbour, and together will provide a 20% increase to movement speed. This is critical to help represent just how fast Pride is, and help us to run rings around our enemies. I'd recommend adding the Shadowed mod to them, to fit in better with the aesthetic, and also make them ultra light for the added action points. Sunglasses are an essential part for the character. He will want to cover up his eyes at all times, and doesn't want anyone to fully realise he can't see. The choice of which sunglasses to go for I will leave up to you, but make sure to always wear them if there is a chance you will be seen by anyone else. Pride is an insanely fast and strong character, who rushes around the battlefield, landing deadly shots and powerful sword strikes. Speed is key to this build, and we will take every bonus we can get to add to it. Jet works incredibly well with the added speed, and I recommend spamming the stuff in tough fights, or when significantly outnumbered, in order to dart between gunfire and cut down your foes. Typically in a fight you will want to constantly switch between blade and guns, depending on what will work best, but it will take some time to get used to this. I find that if you're fighting one-on-one, -on -one, stick to the sword and cut them to ribbons, as you dodge their attacks. If you're going up against three or four enemies, then whip out your pistol and use the power of gun Fu to cut them all down in a single vats round. If you're up against more than this, then I'd instead recommend starting with a pistol and then using the slow time of jet to let you headshot any dangerous enemies that you can, before switching to your sword and using blitz to teleport between them all and pick them off individually. This build offers an incredibly fun way to win fights, and between this guy and Greed I've had more fun than capturing footage than I normally do. To help with roleplaying for this build, just treat everyone in the game as a lesser individual. Even with his new disadvantage, Pride still is insanely powerful, and will resent everyone in the Commonwealth not having trained themselves as much as he has. In addition, always seek out challenges and push yourself to become better at the game in general. Thanks to all of you who have made it through to the outro of this video. Pride is easily one of my favourite characters that I've made, and seeing as I'm nearly at 50, that's saying something. I can't recommend playing as this guy highly enough, but if you do, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. 
As always, subscribe if you're new around here, give the video a like to help me keep making builds, and hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to never miss an upload.